Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series, The New Threat. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy Chapter 2. Subject, AI Omega. Species, Human-Created Artificial Intelligence. Description, No Physical Description Available. Ship, Multiple. Location, Multiple. As usual, I was handling multiple tasks at once. Trying to get all of our ships repaired and replaced while also building new fleets was a monumental task. Recruiting, training, and assigning staff to those ships was another monumental task. On top of all of that, I had to deal with spoiled senators who had secured themselves firmly within social bubbles that kept them ignorant. The lack of attacks on Sol had raised tensions for a while and made the politicians more receptive. But now those tensions were evaporating and the politicians were, to use an antiquated turn of phrase, back on their bullcrap. I fail to see how giving the Republic our technology would possibly stand to bear us, Omega. Senator Richardson said with an insincere, dramatic flourish of frustration. May technology that we would be giving them is several generations behind our own. Add to that strict oversight and anti-intelligence measures, and we have no cause for any concern. In return, we gain a new fleet at record speeds, I replied. We get new fleets, but we would be pouring money into their economy. A foreign economy which we aren't even trading with yet. My constituents have concerns about this. If I had eyes, they would be rolling. My constituents, he meant the corporations that fund his campaigns. The corporations who would much rather we build our own stations and then start building new fleets. Short-sighted fools who believe they're the smartest people in the galaxy, as fools often do. Still, they make life interesting in their own way. The Republic has to hire many of our own citizens to work aboard the stations and to be able to fulfill orders. Trainers, subject matter experts, licensed professionals, and the like. The ships are being made to our standards, and the Republic is footing the bill for the people they're hiring, I explained. So we're getting a rebate, Richardson replied sarcastically. Not only that, but integration. Your constituents could be swayed by simply pointing out the integration leads to trade and access to new markets. Our people aboard the stations will want supplies from home that the Republic cannot provide, and those supplies will be viewed with envious eyes. Before long, popular demand for trade networks will explode. But if we vote no on the proposal, who knows how long it'll be before we can secure trade guarantees. Richardson looked deep in thought. I could tell that he was working on positioning statements for his corporate overlords. Finally, he nodded and waved his hand, indicating that he will vote yes. I already had more than enough yes votes, but I needed Richardson to explain to certain corporate board members why this idea had merit. A yes vote won't have much weight without corporate cooperation, and a direct meeting with me would intolerably bolster their already massive egos. Satisfied, I turned off my avatar and switched my attention to the reptilian shiphead that I was leading to what would be the most interesting meeting of his career. The directors had been in a bit of a stalemate due to the lack of intelligence regarding the Republic's intentions. Neither they nor the Senate would sign off on an intel-gathering mission just yet. Though, so I came up with an alternate solution. Shiphead Alina was just graduated from diplomacy training course, so he could have his finger on the Republic's pulse. Plus, I really want to see his reaction. So I just sit here? Ulina asked. Correct, I replied. Alina sat down and I activated a chat for him. He jumped slightly as a hard light monitor of a keyboard appeared in front of him. He studied it with obvious confusion on his face until he recognized what it was and who it was connected to. I relished the shock and horror that overrode the confusion. Director 1 has joined the chat. D2. And with that, we're all here. Hello, Shepard Alina. Oh. Ah, uh, he'll need a second just to adjust. What the fuck, Omega? Ulina asked as he scrambled for the keyboard, his heart beating as fast as they possibly could. Welcome to the world of diplomacy, Ulina, I replied, gesturing towards the monitor. This terminal is translated for your convenience. Just type to the way you normally would and I'll get your point across. The reptilian head cursed under his breath, 
as he studied the keyboard and began to type his reply. You, Hannah, apologies for the delay. This meeting was unexpected. D4, of course it was. We don't announce when we'll be having our meeting, and this meeting in particular is unusual for us. D9, indeed. D2, the reason we're meeting is because of your proposal. Normally, we'd be having Omega go through back channels to get the answers for us, but that would take too long and risk hostilities with the Republic. Instead, we're going straight to the horse's mouth. What's a horse? Olina asked. It is a four-legged mammal that used to as a mode of transportation on several human worlds, I answered. D9. Let's get to the point. We have questions for you about this proposal, and our time is limited. Answer quickly and truthfully, understood? You. Yes. D9. Good. How likely is it that the public will hire our own technicians to serve aboard the shipyards? You. Very likely. It's part of the assumptive draft. D2. Where will the materials be coming from? You. We have several suppliers that are both public and private. D3. Hello again, Olina. Will the public allow oversight? You. Hello, Director 3. Yes. But there was some struggle with that. As long as the U.S. doesn't attempt to indenture our workers, it'll be fine, though. D11. Clarify what you mean by indenture, please. You. Overwork them. D3. That's not what I meant by oversight. Will the public allow us to make certain that the information regarding certain technologies doesn't leak? Elena looked at my avatar with confusion. They want to be certain that sensitive technology is worked on by U.S. personnel only, and they can't be sure of that without having people who are reporting back to us, I explained. You. I am confident that the Republic will prove any oversight you have planned, so long as it isn't detrimental to our citizenry. D8. I get the feeling that the Republic is borderline desperate for this to happen. Am I right? You. Yes. The OU is pressing again. Hard. We need the tech that you're willing to give, and we need you to be a much larger force than you are now if we're going to win this war. D13. Not to mention the economic boost. You. I don't know anything about that, but I expect that it would be a secondary reason. There won't be an economy if we're all wiped out. Elena didn't know it, but several directors chuckled at his reply. Despite his nervousness about his new duties, he had a certain way with words. Director Six was fidgeting, though. In previous meetings, she had been the most unsure of this proposal. You should say what's in your mind, Director, I said to her. I know. My intent isn't to be hostile, so I'm working on a good positioning statement, she replied. No, I don't think there's another way to word it. Best to be blunt. D6. What assurance do we have that our own technology will not be turned against us after the war with the Omni Union is resolved? You. With respect, we don't go to war as often as you do. There's posturing amongst the members of the Republic, but it's mostly localized and rarely acted upon. As things are now, we have a numerical advantage, and that's it. But by building your numbers up to match our own, improving our shields and weapons tech will still see you at a significant advantage. Even if you were to give us the shields and weapons that you're currently using, you would still be able to outmaneuver us. In short, your assurance is that we have a mostly peaceful history. You will have to neutralize our numerical advantage, and you will still be significantly ahead of us technologically. D12. Well said. D5. I see no flaw in your argument. D2. Are there any other questions for Shiphead Alina? D1. No. D12. No. D3, no. D13, no. D8, no. D4, no. D10, no. D5, no. D9, no. D6, no. D11, no. D7, no. D2. I also have no further questions. Shepard Alina, thank you for joining us. You are dismissed. The holographic monitor in front of Alina winked off, and the ship head visibly deflated in relief. After a few moments of silence, he turned to look at my avatar. Please don't do that again, he said. Meetings with the directorate are quite rare for someone who isn't a director, I explained. No promises, though. Tim is waiting outside to guide you to Reynolds. Oh, and don't tell anyone about this meeting, obviously. Elena looked deflated, but managed to utter an acceptance before gathering his strength and leaving the room. I shut off my avatar and turned my attention back to the directors. D3, I concur. D9, I concur. D2. The proposal regarding the construction of new fleets will go ahead as outlined if approval by the Senate is obtained. The final agenda topic is Project Gungna.
D8. Funding has been cleared. Of the recommended researchers, I nominate A.I. Henry to lead the project. D2. Any other nominations? Of course, there won't be. Henry is extremely capable. So much so, even I rely on it. Henry was close to a solution to my infinite cloning issue, and is still upset about me postponing the project. It had taken me sharing my memories of the invasion to get it to accept the necessity of said postponement. D7. I concur. D2. Project Gunga is approved and A.R. Henry will lead the project. A.R. Henry will select additional staff as needed. Oh, there are no further agenda items. Meeting adjourned. I watch the directors log out of their various terminals and continue about their business. Then I double-checked soul sensors and made sure that the orbital defense networks were properly functioning. It had been three months since the OU attacked, and some believed the threat to be over, and that the orbital magnet acceleration cannons are unnecessary. But, as usual, I know better. End of chapter. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightshock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.